Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is gonna be a vlog from the green course at the Golden Horseshoe in Williamsburg, Virginia. During the Be Better Golf School, we shot this vlog. So it's coming up right now. Stay tuned to the end of this video where there'll be some channel news. There's so much stuff going on. Just wanted to update you guys a little bit on what's shot, what's planned, and everything else. But let's get straight to the golf action right now. All right, there he is. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is Dominic. One of my friends from the Be Better Golf School and his dad, Conrad, back there somewhere walking up. And you guys know nephew Jack. And we're at the green course at the Golden Horseshoe. It's the day after the school, a little bit before my flight. Jack and I am a little match, Jack. Match play, stroke play, what would you like? Uh, we'll, do a little, we'll, we'll do a little match play. A little match play match for Jack and I. Keep it, keep it fun. We're, we're, uh, that money you earned on the school, and is that what we're going to play for? I'm funny. Okay, here we go. All right, as they say at the Masters, here's the golf action. 407 yards, straight away, par four. I hit that hard. That was a really good shot. Uh, down the middle, way down the middle, actually. I measured that one out at like 315, which was good. And here is Jack. Good ball. Jack hit it solid, a little up up the right. Jack has not really been hitting his driver that great. All right, so here's Dominic Parducci from Hawaii. Dominic Parducci. He now lives in South Carolina, but he came to the school with his dad. Hit a great drive. Not bad. Should be just left of that first bunker in front of the second one. Oh, no. It's really good. Real good. You guys tell me, why do people from Hawaii always say Hawaii? They, like, break it up. It's because of... Vowels. Oh, okay. So our vowels are all pronounced differently, and they're all pronounced separately. Oh, okay. All right. So if you want to sound like a local, what do you say? Hawaii? Hawaii. All right. Here's Conrad. Conrad uh, flew from Hawaii to South Carolina, and then he drove up from South Carolina to Virginia for the Be Better Golf School. Dominic and Conrad have a pretty cool connect father-son connection because they really bond over YouTube videos. So not just YouTube golf videos, but they do lots of functional movement videos that they watch together. They're always sharing YouTube videos with each other. So it's pretty cool. Dominic at the school actually was our second biggest gains as far as club head speed. He increased by, I think, 12 miles an hour. Beauty. Oh, yeah. Look at this tight draw up the right side. Drawing to the middle, big bounce. Nice. Laser focus. All right. <laughs> Yeah, Conrad was super into the focus band stuff we were doing in the school. Uh, check out this quick message that he was talking about why those guys came. I I just felt like coming to this school was gonna gonna end my search. I, I've been searching for years and years and years, and it just seemed like you've done all the searching for me, and now you know. This is this is what I need to do. This is this is all I really need to work on. Oh yeah, loving it. Good shot. Go. You know what? I'm pushing up. What? Uh, what's the yardage? I think like 155. So I had I had six, but it says I am a, I don't know. I'm just kind of feeling the seven. Okay. Into the wind a little bit. Yeah, jacks into the wind just a little bit and is Ooh, you hit a fade off that draw fanned it a little bit oh horrible kick bunker nah, I don't know. Maybe. all right 122 yeah the day before this day because we went out at the school we played both days, so this is my third time playing here. And the day before was the day that I hit it, 318. This day I oh, hit no. it about 292 or so. So oh. 120 okay, a little deep. to the flag stick, and I hit it a little far. So uh, here's uh, Conrad. So he had hit a good shot, but it, it came up a little short. This is really stretching him out to, to be playing 415 or 420 yard holes, par fours out here. The, and you get very, very little roll out here as well. 
So uh, he had two great shots, and he's still short. Hit a fairly decent pitch there. Only missed his landing spot by a little bit, but that cost him a lot. Conrad, like I said, was super into the focus band stuff that we did. These guys are really interesting guys because they're they're relaxed guys. They're like they're calm guys, but when it comes to things that they care about, like their work or golf or things like that, they take it very seriously, and they can actually put themselves under quite a bit of stress. That was my lag putt. Tony showed me something with lag putting I have to share with you guys as far as talking about adding some wrist hinge in, in the lags. And uh, he doesn't call them lags, but adding the wrist hinge in the, in the distance putts, that's really helped my lag putting. I haven't three-putted since I learned that. So that was cool. All right, so I'm one up in the match, going to the second hole. Oh, yeah. 385. Okay. It's a dog leg left, and I hit a really nice roping hook here. Jack hit a poor tee shot to this spot. That's pretty good, Jack. Yeah, he got it right through that window and advanced it nicely. But he's in trouble all over the place. All right, Jack's had an adventure. He was in the water, hit a really good shot out of the, uh, the lake. Now this is for a, a bogey. Oh, you got That is down. a great putt. Oh, you're not gonna stay there. Oh boy, it's way downhill there. It's me for birdie. We didn't see my my approach shot was was good, but Jack was lost and couldn't film. A little tougher to do the vlogs when you, you don't have the push cart. Yeah, Stefan, who came to the school was telling me he, he can notice a difference when I shoot the vlogs with the real camera or when I shoot it like this one, which is with the cell phone. Be, just because you don't see the, the details, especially some of the guys, some people watch the vlogs on their TVs at home, and when it's on that big of a screen, it's easier to follow the, the ball and everything else like that. So I'm gonna try to make it an effort to Here's a drive. use the real camera more All often. Right, two out of three of your drives have been really good. Yeah, Jack hit a good drive there. Really yeah, well balanced perfect. that Great time. Angle. And Jack, you guys can tell just by looking at him, uh, we get to see him on Bebeter Golf every two or three months. And he's bigger. He is just about half an inch shorter than me. That's it. But he's also going to be a bigger person than me, too. So uh, he's going to have the ability to hit it a long way. All right, so that was an awesome drive. Hit an awesome drive Alignment here. Alignment and commitment. Just get through the shot. Yeah, Conrad's Honestly. brain can go a million miles an hour, so I'm trying to yap right up until the second he there hits it. There you go. Yeah. Awesome Great. shot. Bomb. Yeah, so when I came to the school here, what was happening is I was getting really stuck. I would kind of get in this backswing position. My hips would fire. My arms would sit behind, and I would throw my back out probably one out of every three range sessions and uh, so by starting with that right side and getting my arms in front of my body it's just been it's been liberating really no obviously Dominic gets all the credit for that he's a great athlete a really great beach volleyball player and uh, I'll tell you more about Dominic Pretty later but uh, yeah. mentally the some of the mo the Parducci's are some of the most interesting people that have been around all right, he, he's got a short approach here shot. from the See, rough. The, the rough just shuts it a little bit. A pin high. Good shot. Birdie putt. Oh, but. Dominic broke his personal best record for most pars in a round and also for most pars in a row Go. In, this, in this round we did right after the school. Oh, man. Landed a little short, There's and I rolled Jack's up. Part. I'm going to have a birdie putt. That's Jack's putt. Dominic for birdie. All right, so here's Dominic for birdie. Dominic huh. is the type of guy, he is a range rat. He goes to the range a lot. He almost never plays. He's obsessed with golf, but um, like he played beach volleyball for a very long time, just practicing with a coach before he would ever, ever play in a game. So he just doesn't want to do anything until he's good at it. So uh, it was actually hard for his dad to get him out to the course. He was real interested in coming to school, but to the course, he, he didn't want to do. He wants to perfect it on the range before he goes to the course, which is obviously not really how golf works. But uh, he's doing pretty well, improvement-wise. All right, match. 
All right, match wise, Jack is three down. And uh, he's having a hard time. Jack had shot last week, he's been on a tear of awesome golf. Last week he shot 68, and then he shot 71. From different tees at his club, but still really good scores. But uh, even in shooting those scores, they were all from hitting iron shots really stiff. He, he has not been, even when he shot those scores, he hasn't been uh, driving the ball well. So that's holding him back right now. He keeps kind of overfading it off the tee. All right, here's Jack and talking about that same shot we were just talking about. He hit a kind of a baby slice there. Tony and Jack were working a little bit on getting Jack's club face a little bit more closed up at the top of his swing so he doesn't have to kind of stall and flip through impact. So he can just put a little bit more compression, a little more squeeze. I hit it right down the middle. I was driving it well this day. Where'd that go? Jack hit it just pin high, a little left of the green. And here I am from, I've got a short approach shot here. This hole is only 345. So I hit, but I hit it over the green and this is actually a pretty hard shot. And good that was a good result. My chipping is, it's funny just because I, I need to, so as soon as I make these vlogs, I need to put them out. So as soon as I put them out, because already just this is a couple of weeks ago, and I've been working so hard in my pitching and chipping with Tim Yelverton while he's been out in California that this already feels like, wow, I don't do that anymore, even though maybe it's not that different. But I really like my putting, and I make this putt, even though the, the camera ran out of memory, and then I got it, I got it back. So I made that putt. What is that for yeah, that's four pars in a row, I think? Yeah, this is 545 yard five. par five it's fading. from where we were. Good. I hit it down the right hand side. Jack hit it down the left hand side. And this is his three wood. Jack hates his three wood. He never hits it any good. And he hit a dead straight, just a dribbler though. Felt gross. Down in the dumps. Uh, no, I'm right. Jack, give us a little review of those sunglasses. A lot of people are asking about these Oakley golf sunglasses. What, what do you think? Do, uh, they hurt, do they hurt your temples? Do they push on your temples real hard? No, they fish pretty good. But you got to wear them over your hat, right? You don't put them under the hat. You yeah. put them on? Yeah, you put them on top of the hat yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the thing I noticed about them. Yeah. You like them? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever tried the golf ones? The Nah, these... With the prism glasses, the nah. lenses, the prism lenses. Yeah. I got a pair of those, and I'm trying them out right now. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that has, that's not an advertisement. It has nothing to do with this channel at all. I just, oh, a lot of people on Instagram, BB underscore golf show, uh, when I put up my, sun, my sunglasses, were asking me what I thought about them. I'm still kind of coming up with my opinion about it. All right, I hit a good monster hybrid down the middle, advance it. Here's Jack's approach for his third shot. Right, Not bad. It's 54 yards, actually 53 yards, but it's a huge green to work with. So I'm actually going to, instead of 60 degree, I'm going to take this 54 degree. I'm only going to try to carry it halfway on the green. And then these, this green, these greens aren't very fast, but this one is. It looks kind of firm from the way Jack's bounced in there. That's just going to be to my pocket and to the hole. One of the things I need to do is figure out my half shot yardages, like my yardages for all three of my wedges for how far I hit it with just half a shot and, a, and three quarters of a shot. And then I want to get all these yardages marked down. So I know it in kind of a Dave, Dave Pell's kind of way. So that was for birdie. I missed that. So that's another par. So that's all pars for me. That's a par for Jack. And this is the hardest hole in the course. 400 and, what is it? 435 yards with a giant ravine kind of blocking your second shot or that you have to carry for your second shot. So I'm working on, if you notice, I'm not doing flamingo drill here because I'm working more on getting everything synced up together now. I don't have to feel as extreme arms first because I'm a little bit more in sequence. 
So uh, that was hard. I hit that ball extremely well. Down the left-hand side, I'm, I'm a little bit in the rough, but I hit it really far. Not bad. Jack didn't like it, but it, it went generally straight, just short of the green. All right, so you can kind of tell that my lie here is it's it's going locally here uphill, and that was great impact, but then it's going downhill down towards the green, and, okay, I landed that pin high just a little left. Jack and I both ended up making pars. I two-putted Jack got it up and down nicely. So that was six, the par four. Then we moved on to the 167-yard par three seventh, and there's a little backstory to this hole, so let's check it out. All right, yesterday when we were on this hole, Dustin had a hole in one. I just aimed right at it. All right, we're at the Be Better Golf School. We just finished in Williamsburg, and now everybody's out and playing. I hit a seven iron about to 12 feet, just a little past, I don't see 20 it. feet. Maybe it is. Dustin hit a six iron, Didn't right, it, Dustin? You, yeah, you sure didn't go long. Oh, it's probably in the hole. Is that you, Brendan? That's me. That's Callaway. We're going to check this out. No way. It's in the hole. That's what we were trying to tell you. <laughs> How about that? My first hole in one. Oh, yeah. How about that? 100, 167 yards. My first little six iron. At the Golden Horseshoe. He turned around and didn't even watch it. Yeah, he, he hit it. He said, oh, oh, it's short. But as soon as he turned around, it curved like a putt. Yeah. And it was just tracking. I thought it was going to I thought it was gonna end up about eight, six feet right of the pin. Hole in one. Drink, uh, drink, 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 drink. That, that's with like a, a pro's shot. With a six It's just like, oh, I want to land it about 10 feet. It was right, like a, it was like a Corey Pavin hole yeah, in one. It just landed just, short and curved. Yeah, that's awesome. Landed about. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. Congratulations, Dustin. 25 years of playing golf. 25 years of playing golf made a hole in one. It's awesome. Let's see if Jack, his son, can, can top him. All right, we're back in real time now. Hopefully that all makes sense. All right, so 167 yards. I think six iron for Jack, almost almost positive. Uh, Jack is just way out of sorts today. Oh, no. Bunker. Here, Jack. And this was about three weeks ago, maybe three and a half weeks ago. So I'm not sure how Jack's been playing since then. We'll have to do a little update with Jack. I hit a really good shot there. A little off balance, but solid. A little bit off to the right, and but on the green, putting for birdie. So I've had all parts to this point. So this would be for for one under. Big curve, nice. Yeah. Wasn't it? Wasn't an ace, but. 2019 rules in effect. I only did that because Dominic pulled out the Instagram. Tag it. Nice, nice, nice. All right, huge thanks to Conrad for shooting that for me, some of it, and uh, thanks to Dominic and Mike and Clint and Stefan and all the guys that came out to the Be Better Golf School. Uh, really appreciate uh, Stephen and everybody else that, that came. I know I'm missing some guys. That came out to the Be Better Golf School. If you are interested in going to Be Better Golf School, go to bebettergolf.net slash schools. And now stay tuned to this message. It's a little bit of channel news. Some exciting stuff. All right, guys. Thanks for watching that. Congratulations to Dustin on his hole-in-one. Congratulations to my nephew, Jack, on his 68. His lowest ever score and I think dropping in the very near future. Uh, so that was at the Be Better Golf School in Williamsburg, Virginia. Uh, we shot that, had a, a fantastic time with all the guys that were there. Some really amazing improvements and everything else. At the, at the end of this, I'll put on a, a little tag of what the Parducci's thought about the school, the father and son that, that were there in that vlog with us. But really had a great time. We'd like to do some more. So uh, not sure where the next Be Better Golf School is. There's people, I'm having people from all around the country and some international people too asking us where the next one's going to be. Uh, probably Southern California, just because um, some of the other places we could do the school would just be too hot. So um, probably do it uh, in Long Beach, I'm thinking. Around, I don't know. 
end of August, maybe. I'm not sure. And uh, so, so that's one thing that's going on. If you're interested in, in doing that at the end of August, let me know and I'll put you on like a preliminary list. I have to see what Tony's availability is and other stuff. Last weekend, we did the Be Better Golf Scoring School with Tim Yelverton. Tim is a, uh, he teaches guys on the PGA Tour. He teaches women on the LPGA Tour. And in my opinion, he's the best short game instructor in the world. Really, really good. So Tim, uh, I flew Tim out here and we met with, uh, we had six guys come out for the scoring school, which we were out there for about five hours doing all different kinds of short game shots, working mostly on uh, this base motion stuff, which is uh, when you guys saw the live broadcast on Be Better Golf, that was, we were just working on the base motion stuff, which uh, really, Tim says, unless you can hit, if you want to be a single digit hand, handicap, unless you can hit eight out of 10 uh, solid base motion chips, which is basically from a perfect lie, get really good contact, uh, eight out of 10 of them, you shouldn't move on to really anything else as far as like trying to change trajectories or trying to uh, you know, work on distance control. He's like, just get your base motion correct. So we had amazing success with the guys that were there. So shot a lot of cool content around that school that I have to edit. I have a whole day tomorrow just for editing. Uh, another thing, I shot I shot two vlogs with Tim. Uh, we went to a par three course at night and shot a, a long vlog with him. That had some amazing insights on how to control distances uh, and how to hit all different kinds of shots around the greens and really like kind of the, the tour mentality. Tim's won a whole bunch of professional and uh, division one tournaments in college and he's won professional events when he was a, when he was a touring pro for a while before he started teaching full-time and a really cool insight into his mentality and then uh, we shot those we shot a really cool video on how to fix the chipping yips which is coming up you guys will see on the channel and then we spent two days of his trip out here filming this short game thing that I'll make an announcement about later which is just mind-blowingly awesome. I'm just so it's it's uh, I'm just really really excited to get this out there because it's it's just so good, and uh, the stuff that I learned in making this short game thing with Tim just like blew my mind. Uh, so it was really cool, really cool. That's that's all coming up. Also, a tour player, he's like ranked like 1,600 in the world, but it it would be a name that that a lot of you guys, especially if you're uh, from Asia, you would probably know this name pretty well. Anyway, he's a fan of the channel and he wants to come out and do a vlog, so I'll probably do a vlog with him. Also, if you guys remember earlier in the channel, I was trying to get Monty and George Genkis to do a match against each other. Well, I haven't let that idea die completely. With, uh, with George and Monty, that, that's over. That's not going to happen, apparently. But... I am trying to set that same kind of deal up with two other instructors that would be, people would be just as interested to see that match. It would be awesome. Think about that. If that happens, that'll be in September and it will be really huge. It would be really like a big event. Thing is too, uh, I'm going to hype it like, you know, I'm really going to hype it because it's it's going to be, I mean, that, that type of thing kind of re reminds me of like ancient China, where you have like different Kung Fu masters with their different styles and then like, you know, going against each other. I don't want this to be contentious like that, but it is really, really interesting to see these guys who, you know, are teaching all the time for years and years and years actually get into, okay, well now I got to do it. And I think that's just compelling to me. So I'll, I'll be doing that. I want to fly Tim back out to California as well, because we had such success with Tim, when, when we were working for a limited time while he was out here with people, we had such, such success with having people out here uh, and working with people and working with a lot of juniors too. We, we saw a group of about 25 young girls who are in a, a girls golf camp out here that Tim helped them out a little bit. And then also he did a really interesting hour and 10 minute talk specifically laying out his plan of how the short game should work. So he did this uh, demonstration presentation. So 
I'm going to edit that together and that's going to be that's going to be available through the channel pretty in the next couple weeks. So, if I hustle and if I rush, maybe I can get out some of this stuff sooner than I thought I would be able to because uh it would be really cool. So anyway, since we had, we were mostly, t Tim was out here mostly just for filming for Be Better Golf, but I would like to bring him out again in September or so. So, uh, no, yeah, I think September as well. So uh, if I did, then we would do, I think, two real big full day schools where we were just working for eight plus hours on basically shots 30 yards and in which is uh, the thing that that's the only thing t Tim teaches. So, and I'm trying to learn his technique uh, more and more. And gosh, it's, I've just been having so much fun uh, after work and stuff, just hitting pitches and chips. You know, it's just like, because I haven't had that. You guys have seen my vlogs. I haven't had that good tour style impact at the bottom. And now I'm getting it more and more. And it's just, uh, it's really exciting. So. Lots of cool stuff coming up in the channel, and also I want to get have an opportunity to meet more you guys and play more golf with subscribers. So, um, and just kind of do little player profiles with people. With a lot of ideas. I also had an idea that it would be cool if in August I could put up a video every day, a new video every day for one month. Uh, I'd, that would be a real challenge with my my personal and professional life, but I'd like to do it and just kind of see what the results are like a lot of times with, with this channel like I shoot a lot of stuff and a lot of the stuff I shoot doesn't get put up on the channel because there's a few people like I call the notification squad uh, people who have actually like like the channel and they've clicked the bell and there's a few people who are super into the videos and they're super into um, really trying to get better and get some insight on stuff from these different teachers and then also like kind of the vlogs and stuff so those people, they'll watch like, they'll watch almost anything as far as like, you know, the content that comes out, but I don't release just everything because I try to keep it like, you know, I try to keep like really the, the really good stuff as the stuff that goes out, but I'm starting to wonder if it would be better just to release everything. You know, there's different theories about, you know, new media and stuff where it doesn't work like old media where you, you only put out limited stuff. You know, in new media, maybe you should just put out everything. So let me know, would you rather see higher, higher level produced and edited things or would you rather see more content, more content, more content that's maybe not as polished but just as real? So that's the other thing. The other thing too is I've revamped my website a little bit. I went from bebettergolf.weebly.com to bebettergolf.net. So go check out bebettergolf.net. I'm gonna start to ask all the instructors that I talk to to start writing articles for, for that website. And uh, so I have some exclusive stuff there. And also uh, that's a place where I can post stuff that I don't wanna make public uh, for because some of the casual viewers people if you've watched this far you're you're not a casual viewer but uh, but I want to post some of that stuff onto bebettergolf.net that I would think would be maybe too boring or too uh, to just not like snazzy enough to just make like a public video about so bebettergolf.net is a good spot for that and uh, I want to start doing more live broadcasts that's something else that I really I like doing, but it has to be kind of around an event. Like I really like watching golf turn. People have emailed me actually say, Hey, almost none of my friends are interested in golf. So it's fun. The live broadcast during uh, events like on the golf channel and stuff like that are fun because it's kind of like a community room. The final thing is, uh, Oh yeah. So, so just tag. So, uh, follow me on Instagram at BB underscore golf show. Follow me on Twitter at BB underscore golf show. And, uh, that's it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, especially this part. Just a little recap, a little announcement of what's going to be going on in the channel. See you later. Bye. At the school, what I've been working on with Tony mostly and you is getting my right side a little more in control and getting my arms out in front of my body. And it's just been allowing me to swing at the ball and actually feel like I'm actually swinging a bit, which is a lot more freeing. And so far, the progress has been really, really good. I've loved the Be Better Golf School. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I recommend it 
to just about anybody. I, um, there, there's, there's so much, we're, we're all grasping for all these little tidbits and information and it just seems to simplify it so much. Yeah, it just deconstructs I, everything into a much more natural fluid movement. 